Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Rule the Waves 3, a new strategy and tactical war game out by the folks at Naval Warfare Simulations and published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. This is, I lost track, what are we, episode 11, 12, somewhere in there of the series, but we're playing as Italy and we've been at war with France for exactly four years now, 48 months into the war. Austria-Hungary joined the war recently, and we're currently blockaded. Uh, with that being said, the French are also blockaded because while the Germans are not allied to us, they are allied to our allies, the Japanese, and the Germans have entered the war, although I believe they've entered, like, their own war against the French, and they are blockading the French. Austria-Hungary is not blockaded, however, and our allies being in different sea zones is why we're blockaded. Now, if we take a look here, there are 14 battleships between the French and the Austrians. We have seven, so that kind of gives you some reason why we're blockaded. Uh, the enemy also has 15 armored cruisers, while we only have five. They have 25 light cruisers, while we only have four. And that's the situation in the war right now. The thing that gives me the greatest pause, victory points are nearly even, and we've actually fared pretty well in the conflict so far, in the sense that we've taken Libya and Tunisia from the French. We did lose Angola, which we had taken previously uh, from a neutral power, um, but uh, we did lose Angola. We've taken Tunisia and Algeria, uh, and we attempted to take Corsica, but we were pushed back when the Austrians joined the war. We were no longer able to maintain our landing force ashore there. But the thing that gives me pause and real concern in this conflict at the moment is well, we have done a lot of damage to the French fleet, and while we are notionally holding our own, the continued blockade of our own ports and the longevity of the conflict has increased unrest in Italy up to nine. If you get toward 10, you run the risk of a revolution. And so there's a very real possibility the Kingdom of Italy will fall to revolution before long. The hope would be to get out of the war sooner rather than later. Even if we can get out with like a white piece or very minor reparations, I don't think they would take Tunisia and Algeria from us. So I think that would actually benefit us in, in a net net sense. But I don't want to like give up a ton because then they may just take them back in the peace negotiations. So we'll have to see what comes of that. But our current situation is not great. The good news is France is also dealing with some unrest, partially because of the German blockade of France, partially because of casualties and defeats over the last four years. Uh, but that's where we find ourselves right now in um, April of 1896. We do have a little bit of money left over in the budget. I took a look between episodes at possibly uh, building a new class of ships. Honestly, the technology development that we've had on the armored cruiser side doesn't really make much of an upgrade over what the Palistro class is, our current sort of flagship armored cruiser design. Same is really true of the battleships. I could possibly design a larger battleship class that has a little bit better speed than the THG class, but I don't know that there's really much sense in doing that in the war right now because um, it'll be three years before the darn things are ready anyway. So the only thing I could really see building more of is light cruisers, and again, these are already decent designs, and I don't actually have... I don't think anyway, the technology to improve these substantially. So I think we're going to go ahead and build two more of the cushion classes. Maybe there's a chance uh, that they could get, they could get right. Why is that the only class of ship? I'm confused. Uh, maybe I could build a couple of the, coo are, they're the only, are these the only ones that are not considered obsolete in our entire fleet? Oh, it just hides anything older than five years. So this is the newest class of ship anyway. But we're going to go ahead and build two more of the Kushin classes. They're going to take almost two years to build, but um, possibly they would get in service in time. So go ahead and do that. That's going to push us into the red a little bit, but we've got some other ships that are coming online soon. Um, so that should that should help um, help out a bit. All right, so let's end this month and move forward to May and see what it has in store for us. Another battle here off the coast of Austria-Hungary, which has been our primary adversary lately. A good number of our ships are currently being repaired, uh, but we're going to go ahead and accept the fight anyway. Austria declines the battle, so we get 800 victory points. Destroyer raid off the coast of France, we'll accept that. And uh, so this will be a smaller scale fight. We have smaller scale fight, but we have two destroyers in the action. And we have to destroy two enemy ships. Well, we have two battleships in the action, so we certainly have the, the firepower to destroy two enemy ships. 
Uh, the ships have to be at least 500 tons, but if we can find some merchant ships near Nice or maybe over near Toulon, that would be fine. I don't actually see a target icon here, so it doesn't look like there's a specific spot on the map we're supposed to go to. So we're just going to sail out toward Nice, or Nice, Nice, I think it is pronounced, and see what we find out. We will lose if we don't sink at least two ships. But we'll see. We usually run into a, a host of light enemy ships, although typically we're using it with our cruisers in action and not uh, not battleships here. So, all right, let's see. We spotted an unknown enemy ship. We'll turn toward it. We're making 16 knots, which is kind of like our battle speed here. Maybe it's a merchant. It looks like it's turning away. 16 knots is fast enough that your your crews are going to get tired of trying to maintain that speed, uh, but they will also be slow enough that you can fire more accurately. All right, so there's light cruiser over to the south, to the west. I'm assuming this AMC, if that's what it really is. Oh, it's a, okay, so it's a small merchant. Presumably that's at least 500 tons. So let's go sink this guy. And we'll go find more ships. There was a light cruiser. It looked like we spotted, but it turned away from us. The battleship should be faster than the light than the merchant. Did he just stop? It's like the merchant stopped because the sun started setting. Strange. All right, so we sank it. Sunset's coming. The good thing with sunset is it means the enemy is more likely to accidentally close with us because they won't see us coming. Which may be what just happened here. We don't know what this enemy ship is, but it is turning away from us. All right, looks to be an armored cruiser perhaps, which will be faster than us if that's really what it is. I think we're going to keep running into it, too. Because it's going to... The AI kind of gets dumb and that they turn back toward you when they lose sight of you. They don't, they're like, oh, we don't know what's over there. But the problem is we're probably not going to... Unless we get, like, a lucky first salvo here, we're not going to be able to draw it in to close action. We get lucky we might slow it down with an initial salvo but you can see like this this thing keeps kind of coming in and out of sight and i don't know if the ai is smart enough to be like oh there's enemy ships over there so let's keep going the opposite direction it seems like they just forget that you're there and then they immediately turn around and start fighting you again like oh i didn't realize there was a battleship there and then but whatever maybe that's not true But it sure seems like it. Are we going to ever... Just give me an early hit with these guys. That's all I need. All right, I'm assuming he's going to turn back. He is. I'm assuming he's trying to get back to Toulon, 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 and that's why we keep running into it. Maybe not. Are there other enemy ships around here that we might be able to run into? There's something. What is it? Please be a cargo ship. Something I can just easily sink. Looks too big for that, though. We just sailed by it and didn't shoot at it, because who knows what it is. Now we're saying it's a transport, which if that's the case, that's great. It's a goner, then. Okay. 
There you go. We sank two enemy ships. So that's considered a victory. I guess we'll just sail home now. I guess it's sort of a coastal raid. So we'll get the 800 victory points for the enemy declining battle with us. And we'll get whatever sort of a default small victory point amount is for winning this battle. Assuming we don't run into anything bad and get sunk. Yeah, those are coastal batteries. I don't want to fight them. Destroyer, huh? I don't think destroyers exist yet. No, it's a Corvette. We can probably chase the Corvette and sink it too. We're spotting more ships. Corvettes are probably slower than us, I think. They also don't carry torpedoes, so I don't need to worry too much. All right, so we sank that. Assuming this is the light cruiser we were... Oh, another transport. All right, well, we're, we're just doing good old-fashioned commerce raiding here with our battleships then. So we sank three merchants now and then a corvette without loss. That's a victory. It's an effective mission there and about a thousand we netted over a thousand victory points there for us so that's a nice little tidy little victory uh protesting workers are turning up outside naval bases urging the sailors to join the revolution what should we do send marines out to scatter them using force hold an inspira inspired speech to the protesters pointing out the sacrifices necessary by all levels of society Make an announcement that I will spend money on the living conditions of the sailors that will reduce prestige and budget, but probably prevent things getting out of order. Send Marines will increase prestige. I don't really want to do that. What do, I mean, I'm, I've got a pretty good prestige level. Maybe we can inspire them. All right, so Japan's giving us some extra prestige. It doesn't look like anything bad happened. It didn't tell me anything bad happened. So we're still at unrest level nine. Victory points. We've got a slight edge. And budget is still okay. We're going to have a cruiser finishing next turn. So that'll help with the budget too. All right. Convoy attack. The French decline. I get another thousand victory points. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. A single light cruiser. The Kushan. Enemy destroyer raid. So they probably have to sink a certain number of my ships. Well, who's shooting at what? I hear gunfire, but I don't see any indication of bad guys. Oh, there it is. All right, Kushin, max speed minus two. It's an enemy cruiser that has eight-inch guns. So we'll see how well we fare. I think I'm faster than it, right? Yeah, by a knot. All right, well, they outgun me, but maybe we can get in there and torpedo them or something. Or just have better crews, perhaps. My Corvettes could come... Give a little bit of help. If we can slow him down. Looks like he's running away. Which is interesting, given they have a firepower advantage. Stern chase! All it's going to take is like one eight inch, one eight inch hit here and we're going to lose, but... Used up more than half of our ammo. You want to fire torpedoes? Because that would be cool. Hmm. 
they're definitely slower than me, which makes me think they might have taken some serious damage. Of course, we have almost no ammo left. We're down to 20% of our ammo. How did you fire torpedoes? I think I heard a torpedo fire there. All right. Their, rot their, uh, their rudder's damaged. They're slowing down. Enemy ship hit by torpedo. Hell yeah. All right. Now enemy ship sink. I haven't actually looked at the damage inflicted yet, but... Got to think a light cruiser taking a torpedo hit's not going to sur survive forever. Yeah, we hit it with another. All right, they sank. So we had light da medium damage to one of our Corvettes, light damage to our light cruiser, and uh, we sank the enemy light cruiser, so a victory there. Another victory for the Italian fleet. 700 victory points versus 69 for the enemy. Mutinies have occurred on some ships in the fleet. Order is eventually restored, but fleet morale is shaken. Fleet morale is not in great shape. Revolutionary ideas from Russia Hungary are infecting our workers and soldiers. Can we just have peace? I mean, we're winning battles. We've got a slight victory point edge, but uh, the home front, not so pretty. Okay, if they land on Sardinia, that's going to suck. Can we just please have peace? We have a very slight victory point edge. I just I just want a freaking peace treaty. That's all I want. Okay. All right, we're going to lay down. Do we lay down another cushion class? So what are we doing right now with light cruisers? We've got five in service with nine more coming. That's 14 total. That feels like a good number for the size of our fleet. We could expand slightly, but I don't know that I'd really want to. Austria-Hungary is apparently blockaded. Who by who? What's in the med? I don't think we have enough of an edge there, do we? Uh, Austria Hungary's nine battleships. Enemy blockade strength 21 plus 130. Okay. Oh, Japan's deployed some ships too. Oh, they've deployed a battleship and five armored cruisers. Thank you, Japan. Can we just please have peace? Fleet morale is negative one. That's not good. Unrest level's now risen up to 10. That's also not good. All right. So they're regularly declining battles. All right, so we've got one Japanese light cruiser and two allied light cruisers. We've got a convoy battle or convoy defense. And the enemy is straight ahead. Escort set to 20 knots. No, they're light cruisers. Okay. Let's pause here. So the suffix class can probably make 20. They can make 22, which is also our max speed. They're currently sailing at 20 knots. I'm assuming there's nothing else coming at us, but I don't know that that's true. What's the uh, Japanese ship has eight inch guns. Ours have six, I believe, and then some fives. We've now got cruisers on both sides of their task force if we can catch them. Hit. 
Most of our light cruiser crews are now elite, although I would assume the French are as well. We both fought so many battles. Looks like the rear of the suffix is slowing down. The whole task force really is. So we're going to sail right by him. Unrebe will... Let's pause. Let's slow things down. All right, so... Their task force slowed down because the rear ship was badly damaged. We'll have the Liba and the Kushin cut in front of the suffix while the Unibe will kind of go yard arm to yard arm with the rear one. All right, this is all very close in fighting at the moment. Let's slow to 20 knots to try and get better gunnery. We are taking some damage. The enemy's definitely landing some shells on us. Liba has taken nine hits and inflicted seven. Kushin has taken four hits and inflicted... 23. Ooh. Meanwhile, Unibe has taken four hits and inflicted three. Looks like Unibe is on fire. Which I don't love. Kushin has fired through a large percentage of its ammunition. Nibay is really suffering here. She does have torpedo tubes, which would be great if she used it against the suffix, which does not seem to be moving well. And of course, we've got a misidentified signals thing with our rear light cruiser. The lead one is trying is heading toward a friendly port, oddly enough. Oh, fuck. I didn't mean to do that. I accidentally clicked yes on putting my own ships into port. Or at least the light cruisers. Well, this fight just changed in character a bit. All right, well, what's the Japanese ship going to do? Now it's two on one because I'm dumb. All right, well, the Japanese ship's fires are out of control. She's dead in the water. She's going to sink. So we might have just lost this battle due to a misclick. She hasn't sunk yet. Man, I would have finished them off for sure. I think anyway. I'm assuming the cargo ships make it into port, so Italy does technically win the battle. Japan loses one light cruiser sunk. The French lose one heavily damaged and one light damaged. But we still get the victory because they don't sink any of our merchants. Fleet morale improves. That's good. Mutinies have occurred in some ships in our fleet. I'm confused. Morale improved. Why are there still mutinies going on? God damn it. So we are like on the verge of a revolution. Unrest levels up to 11. And I can't tell the politicians, you know, make peace now, you idiots. I, I, can't, I don't have that ability. If they ask me, I can tell them what I want them to do, but I can't do it by myself. I can't like go to the 
prime minister and be like, fools, make peace, fools. All right, looks like we've got another battle. Japan is joining our forces again. All right, we've got two armored cruisers, the Takuya and Marco Polo. We have four eight-inch guns. She's of the Palistro class. The Tokyo is seven-inch guns. Then we've got three light cruisers. We've got a Palistro. We've actually got three armored cruisers up front. You guys should really be in line formation. Screw this whole screen. Line ahead and core. It's daylight, right? We should have good enough visibility here. So this is not a battleship battle. It's an armored cruiser battle. We have It's an enemy coastal raid, so notionally they're raiding our shipping. And we're forming up into line of battle. All right, let's... 20 knots for the light cruisers. 18 knots for the heavies. Enemy armored cruiser here in the van. Another enemy ship spotted. I'm curious if these are all armored cruisers, if we're going to deal with any battleships or what the particular fight is going to look like. Quite a few enemy light cruisers off to the uh, north. All right, so our light cruisers are going to sail into the heart of the enemy formation. Armored cruiser is going to veer off a bit to get broadsides into action. Squadron max speed, get in there. If that enemy light's going to sail off on its own, then we'll ignore it. Of course, it doesn't help that I keep getting light cruisers mis misidentifying signals because it means I'm going to get drawn into longer range fights probably than I want. Also, it doesn't help that the enemy light cruisers are all pretty much faster than mine. Can we launch a torpedo here, guys, against the Lisa? It looks like the enemy armored cruiser here. Let's pause. We've got at least one enemy armored cruiser in bad shape. I'm going to send the Japanese light armored cruiser up there. The light cruiser seemed to have pulverized it. And then we're going to try and cut the Odenberg off here in the south by itself. All right, so the Lisa's hit by a torpedo from our light cruisers. And then the Maestro or Palistro is trying to cut off the Odenberg down here. If we could take out two enemy armored cruisers, that would be great. All right, our lights are going to close on the Odenberg, I think, and then we'll have the Toquita come back and try and finish off the Lisa. She appears to be dead in the water, so I'm hoping she's already sinking. Odenberg is also slowing to a near stop. But she's been dealing with three to one armored cruisers just pulverizing her. Yeah, detach her. Someone just fired a torpedo. 
Sounds like it missed. All right, our Japanese cruiser in the rear there against the Lisa is out of line of sight. But I'm assuming that enemy cruiser is sinking. Assume, assuming the Odenberg is sinking also. All right, the Lisa sank. Odenberg is dead in the water. She's She sank. So we've sunk two enemy armored cruisers so far without loss. Although we've definitely had some damage to some of our light cruisers. The enemy is sailing toward Katerio, so they may escape with the rest of their fleet if they wish. But that's still a pretty big victory if we knock out two armored cruisers without loss. And we do. Two armored cruisers sunk, no losses on our end, just light damage on some other ships. And that's a pretty big win. Minor victory, it says? That's interesting. Revolution has broken out in Italy. Fuck. Soldiers and seamen refuse to carry out orders of their officers. The old regime collapses as angry crowds take over the streets. Italy is forced to sue for peace, accepting harsh conditions. The prime minister has been disposed. All right, so we had like six officers who were prisoners of war. I guess I'm not deposed. I'm still... I lose five prestige, but I'm still in office. And it looks like, based on the peace treaty, we lost Angola, which we lost at the beginning of the war. And our seizure of Tunisia and Algeria is reversed. The Italians get those back. It doesn't look to me like we lost any other territory. We still have Eritrea here. So we're basically back to historical Italian borders. Which kind of sucks, but also our budget is gone. We have no money in the bank. The revolutionaries must have taken that. Why would I need anything in the Indian Ocean? This is not in the Indian Ocean. I guess not. No, I guess it is, but all right. So all of our budget's pretty much gone. Yearly budget is one seventeen. That doesn't make us the lowest. Austria Hungary is lower, but it certainly, and so is Japan and Spain for whatever, for what that's worth. Tension levels drop across the board. We are still allied to Japan, interestingly. And my monthly balance is in bad shape. I can probably salvage that by scrapping some of these ships that are under construction. I have no funds in the bank left to do anything. I can't, like wait a month, let some ships complete, that gets our budget back, like, we have to immediately start making money-saving moves. If I halt a bunch of these ships and just sort of mothball the construction for a minute, I can, okay, so if I mothball... We're going to scrap the Umberto because that's a bad ship in the first place. Okay. So the Ministry of the Navy is like, hey, you'll have less than seven battleships. That would be bad. But it's a temporary thing. I'll lose some prestige, but I I'm okay with that. So we get a little bit of cash from scrapping the one battleship. I thought I had three Kyodulios, but I guess I only have two. Maybe I lost one in the peace treaty, actually, now that I think about it. Because we only scrapped one ship, and we're down to six battles. We have five battleships, so we must have lost one to France. Or someone. No, not on the French ship here. Maybe we didn't. Oh, nope. They got a THG class. Fuck! They got one of my better battleships in the peace tree. Bastards. All right. Well, anyway, so we scrapped the one battleship. Monthly balance somehow doesn't get any better. Okay. Um. Can we mothball all of these Corvettes? I don't, I don't need Corvettes in peacetime.
and then we're going to put our armored cruisers, I guess, of the older classes into reserve. And we're, we've already balanced the budget there. So we'll put the armored cruisers of the old class in reserve. Battleships will remain active to keep their elite crews in shape. The Polistro class armored cruisers will stay in active fleet. Corvettes are mothballed. Light cruisers are active. We have a lot of ships that are currently paused in construction, but we will have an armored cruiser and a light cruiser completed in a month and another two more light cruisers in two months. And then we'll probably resume construction on these other ships as funds become available. We also do need to send some ships to foreign station, which we'll do with one of the Minerva class. That's a, res let's put that in reserve. That's a, Actually, do I even want that class of ships? Four-inch guns, a bunch of them, and slow. Scrap that. And then we only have two active light cruisers, but we'll have more after the next turn. We'll put one of the armored cruisers on foreign station. Okay. Yes, actually, we should send one of these to uh, the Indian Ocean, huh? Okay. That'll help. So I think we got our budget back in, in order pretty quick. We scrapped a couple ships, got a little bit of money from that. We'll be finishing up some other ships next turn. And uh, that's where we find ourselves on the uh, aftermath of the Italian... The Italian War. It does look like we are Civil War. What Does it say anything about our government? Like after the revolution and the government's overthrown, we have a limited democracy? Isn't that what we had before? Hmm. Not sure. In any event, that'll do it for that turn. I guess let's move forward one month and just see if anything changes. We've got some, like, we've got some cruisers finishing, as we said. Budget is in much better shape now. And yeah, still, still with the limited democracy, prime minister, whatever. So we didn't, at least we didn't go red. We didn't go communist. Let's get these light cruisers back under construction. They'll be ready in five months. We'll have two more done to, in the next month. And... Then we'll resume these guys, too. So we'll go one more month. Like cruisers commissioning into the Navy. Back into the black with those guys. Okay. All right, so these guys are working up. Poor crews. Do we even need to work them up or should we just put them right into the reserve? Like newly commissioned ships. It's almost like just put them into the reserve fleet almost. I also wonder if the older battleships of the Cayo Dulio should just be put in reserve because I don't know how long we're going to keep those around. They're pre-game ships, so they're seven years old and all the designs and everything old too. So we'll put those in reserve. Russia's sounding us about an alliance. Prime Minister thinks it can make possible to save on defense expenditures. I want an international disarmament conference. I don't want to lose budget, though. I guess I'm okay with an alliance with Russia, although I don't know that an alliance with Russia will survive with an alliance with Germany. Or with Japan. But in any event, uh, our alliance with Russia increased our tensions with Japan, which makes sense. But now we're allied to Russia, who has a pretty... They have 21 battleships in service. Dear God, how do they afford that? 18 armored cruisers, 21 battleships, 16 light cruisers. So yeah, if we end up in a war with France again, we're set. The problem with the German alliance was they didn't join until the war was probably already decided. The, the Russian alliance would presumably keep the French from ever deploying most of their fleet to the Med. That would be my assumption anyway. 
It does make our naval budget worse, though. It drops from seven one 117,000 to 108. Um, all right, let's move one more month. Two ships finish their working up. Okay. We need to do some new designs, too, but I'm trying to get what, I've, what I'm building completed first. All right, so we are going to run out of money this turn. Let's go ahead and... Halt construction. Oh, we'll resume it on that cruiser. Let's halt it on this guy. We'll halt it on both of those. Two more ships finish their working up. January of 1897. All right, several light cruisers completed. Okay. So, we'll get two more armored cruisers here in the next nine months. Most of our ships that were under construction during the war are now completed. And I'm thinking we'll want to do some kind of like quasi-dreadnought design. I don't know that my research has really supported that. And I also don't have very good guns. They're all negative two for the heavier stuff, which gives me some real pause. We could do the German battleships of 9-inch guns. Historically, the Germans liked their 9.4-inch guns in their battleships in this era. But, um, man, my R&D sucks. Can I increase my R&D budget? I can't. If I go to research here, technology, we're average. So we're not behind. But we're not really jumping ahead we've got medium intelligence across the board we could save some money if we lowered some of that okay all right so these guys are fair we're going to put the fair ships into the reserve fleet i don't need to have like a ton of active Cruise. So if you're if you're at, if you're fair, you get you get lumped into the uh, reserve fleet. If you're elite, we'll keep you in the active fleet. Although I think those guys will drop eventually. All right. Yeah, these guys are losing some of their eliteness. But for now, anyway, fair means reserve. Okay. Um, man, I really just, I need to develop a new, a new gun. Post-war slump has hit the world economy. That's great. So the budget falls a little bit more. Unrest presumably goes up. We're at five. After a naval visit by Russia, you're asked by journalists to comment on the visiting ships. Well, they're my allies, so... These rust buckets are no match for us. I'm not going to lose more prestige or whatever. We don't even have tensions with Russia, so we'll just be like, we're happy to host those crews. Their security agreement with Japan has expired. No surprise they're not going to renew that given our alliance with Russia. Which I think is a better strategic fit for us anyway. Right, we're going to expand our dockyards. It's going to take a year, but we'll do it. Okay. Erdi is done working up. Germany has secured the Laotong Peninsula Territory as a concession from China. Uh, okay. Armored cruiser Amirgo is going to complete, which gets us back into the black, I think, budget-wise. It does, so let's resume these light cruisers, even though they're going to take a year and a half. Okay. 
man, our budget is so small. What is our fleet up to now anyway? So we're still just sitting on five battleships, despite the fact that we said like, hey, we're going to build more. Seven armored cruisers is decent. That's fairly, well, that's behind most countries, but it's competitive with France and Austria-Hungary, who I want to get revenge on. Light cruisers were at nine, which is more than Austria-Hungary, but worse than France, as usual. Uh, okay. Countries are building destroyers. I don't even have destroyer technology unlocked yet. So that's fun. Colonial crisis in Japan has arisen. What do we do? Safeguard our interests, and if it leads to war, prepare to fight? Okay, but what are we safeguard? Like, Japan... All right, safeguard our interest. Who's going to increase tensions with? Just Japan. Let's go to war with Japan, who we share no borders with. And they were allied to us in the last war. A new cruiser from Great Britain has just arrived on a goodwill visit, and the press is reporting of its advanced features. With a higher budget, we could have just as much advanced ships. That'll hurt my prestige, but increase my budget. Uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, so... I so I saw something about destroyers, but I wasn't looking closely. Our armored cruiser will finish in the next month. And we're back in the black. Let's jump ahead to 1898. Once we get to January, then I think we'll stop the turn, and then we'll design some new ships in the next. A new, the naval secretary believes destroyers are the most important part of the Navy. He wants me to build at least 13. Of course, sir. So we must have 13 destroyers building. Okay. So now we've got to design destroyers, right? It's January of 1898. So we could do a... Do, I, do we even have destroyers des technology yet? Okay. Why is it seriously... A Is 300 tons the largest I can make? No. Can I make more than 400 tons? I cannot build destroyers with that displacement. Okay, so we can build up to 400 ton size destroyers. Up. All right, so they don't have armor. Coal with triple expansion engines. We don't have turbines yet, right? Yeah, we don't. It's going to make building efficient destroyers hard. Short range, I guess, would probably be true for any destroyer, right? In this era, anyway. So we could do a short range destroyer with 27 knots, two three inch guns. Can we do four inch guns? The three inch guns have the plus one, so I guess that's what would make the most sense. What do our torpedoes look like, though? Swivel mounts, so they're above ground swivel mounts. We've got four of them. Nice. Heavy or crowded center line torpedo mounts affect rate of fire. You can't build destroy. I, wait, I can't build 400 ton destroyers? Huh. But I could. So I can only build up to 300 tons, which even more limits my... So we could probably make them 26 knots. Get rid of the port and just keep the center line silver mounts. I mean, they're just going to be escorts for the fleet in the med, right? Too many centerline guns and torpedo mounts. What do you mean too many? There's like two. Um, how is it crowded? Okay. 
Can we do double? No, we can't. Port broadside, starboard broadside. I don't know. We'll figure this out in the next episode. I don't know what I'm doing. I need, but I do need to build 13 destroyers. So we're going to have to figure that out because that's what the, that's what the government's demanding and everybody else is building a whole bunch of them too. So we've got to have some, um, with that being said, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. We did lose the, we kind of lost the war. We were winning the war, but then the home front collapsed. The government collapsed and now we're poor. So yeah. With that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave your thoughts below. The rest of the world is gaining on their Chinese colonies, and I would like some, but uh, we'll figure that out next time. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching another episode of Rule the Waves 3. Until next time, I'm out.